Welcome back to one more video on structural analysis. In this video, you will learn about various theories of failure and how to solve the numerical example using these theories. In second year in strength of material, you might have conducted tensile test on mild steel bar in laboratory and calculated yield stress in the bar. In this experiment, the mild steel bar is subjected to tensile force along one direction only, that is it is unidirection or uniaxial along the longitudinal axis. But normally in practice, structural members are subjected to different types of stresses simultaneously. And it is not easy to conduct the test in laboratory with complex loading and therefore this failure criteria have been developed. In all these theories, we calculate the stress in the material in complex state and correlate it with the stress obtained in the material when the member is subjected to uniaxial loading that is which we calculate from the tensile stress tensile test in this video you will learn about what are the different theories of failure and how to apply these to solve numerical example for detailed description about these theories, you may watch my separate video on description on these theories. In this video, we will concentrate on application of these theories to solve numerical example. To understand this topic, that is theories of failure, you must have the knowledge of principal stresses and strain because all these theories are based on principal stresses and strains. So all the theories of failure are based on principal stress in the member and a relationship is developed between principal stress and failure stress at elastic limit in each of these theories. Now in structural analysis, the failure does not mean actual rupture of the member, but it means that there is permanent deformation in the body because of application of the loads beyond elastic limit. So the member is stressed beyond elastic limit, then the failure may occur due to increased elastic, uh, increased tensile stress, increased shear stress or increase in strain energy. So all these theories of failure are based on these criteria. Let us see what are these theories. Various theories have been developed to explain failure criteria when the member is in complex state of stress. And these theories are normally called as theories of failure or theories of elastic failure. According to these theories, failure will take place when limiting value is reached by maximum principal stress, maximum shear stress, maximum principal strain, maximum strain energy, and maximum shear strain energy. So based on this, there are five theories of failure. There are five theories of failure, that is Rankine's theory, Tresca's theory, Beltrami and Hayes theory, von Mises theory, and St. Venant's theory. In first theory, that is Rankine's theory, it is assumed that the material will fail when the maximum principal stress reaches to its limiting value. In Tresca's theory, the member will fail when maximum shear stress reaches to its limiting value. Similarly, in Beltrami and Hay theory uh, depends on maximum strain energy in the material. Von Mises theory is based on maximum shear strain energy in the material or it is also called as maximum distortion energy theory. And St. Venant's theory is based on maximum principal strain in the member. So let us see one by one. Based on these theories, various types of problems can be asked. Type one, that is member subjected to uniaxial force and shear force. Type two, two dimensional stress system. Type three, three dimensional stress system then member subjected to combined bending and torsion 
and stresses in thin tubes that is thin cylinder so we are going to uh, solve numerical example on all these types in subsequent videos as i told you for detailed description of these theories you may watch my separate video on theories of failure here we are just summarizing the what are different formula which will be used while solving the numerical example as i told you that these theories are based on principal stresses and strains and therefore we must have knowledge of principal stresses and strain so you must have seen this formula uh, in second year strength of material that is major principal stress we calculate using this formula sigma 1 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus under root sigma x minus sigma y by 2 square plus q square so i hope you must be knowing all this uh, you have this basic knowledge of principal stress and strain then there is minor principal stress only difference is here negative sign same formula is there to calculate minor principal stress so you must know this formula you remember this formula to solve the numerical examples using theories of failure so maximum shear stress we can get from sigma t max that is may uh, major principal stress minus uh, minor principal stress divided by 2 so you remember this formula then next is stress at elastic limit which we calculate from the tensile test that is yield stress is equal to sigma e which is equal to that is stress at elastic limit which is equal to sigma y that is yield stress now in maximum principal stress theory that is rankine's theory what we do we equate maximum principal stress to stress at elastic limit stress at elastic limit will be given to you which is calculated from the tensile test and what we have to calculate we have to calculate sigma 1 sigma 1 we calculate using this formula so whenever you want to solve the problem on theories of failure using rankine's theory you have to just calculate sigma 1 some something may be unknown in this formula and you have to equate it to stress at elastic limit to get the unknown quantity so this is rankine's theory so in this sigma x is stress in x direction so sometimes px will be given so you have to calculate sigma x what is sigma x sigma x is stress stress is equal to force upon area similarly sigma y sigma y is equal to force in y direction upon area so uh, like this we can calculate all these quantities if the problem is on uniaxial uh, force system then in that case sigma y will be zero just substitute you same formula and substitute sigma y is equal to zero now we will see next theory so next is maximum shear stress theory this theory is also called as treska's theory so in this theory what we do we calculate what is the permissible shear stress how we get permissible shear stress it is equal to stress at elastic limit divided by 2 now this permissible shear stress is equated to maximum shear stress and how do we get maximum shear stress it is difference of major principal stress minus minor principal stress divided by 2 so it is average of this so uh, you can just calculate permissible by elastic limit this will be given sigma e calculate what is permissible shear stress and this is what is actual shear stress equate these two to get the unknown quantities using maximum shear stress theory that is treska's theory next is maximum strain theory or it is also called as maximum principal strain theory or saint venant's theory in this what we calculate we calculate maximum strain due to actual forces and we equate it to the permissible strain you know that stress upon strain is equal to modulus of elasticity and therefore strain is equal to stress upon modulus of elasticity so this is permissible and this is actual so we equate this and we calculate the unknown quantities using maximum principal strain theory 
Next is maximum strain energy theory. This theory is also called as Beltrami and Hayes theory. In this, we calculate maximum strain energy. This is the formula to calculate maximum strain energy in three dimension case. If it is 2D problem, you substitute sigma 3 is equal to zero. If it is uniaxial problem, then substitute sigma 2 and sigma 3 is equal to zero. You can use same formula for all the types of problem that is three dimensional, two dimensional and unidimensional. So here we calculate what is the strain energy and we equate it to permissible strain energy. Permissible strain energy we calculate from the stress at elastic limit that is sigma square upon twice E. This we equate to actual strain energy of the member and we calculate the unknown quantity. If it is two dimensional problem, I just told you that this 2E and 2E we can cancel and we can modify this equation like this. And if it is 2D problem, then sigma 3 is equal to zero. And if sigma 3 is equal to zero, this formula will reduce to like this. So there is no sigma 3 in this formula. Next is maximum shear strain energy theory, which is also called as maximum distortion energy theory or von Mises theory. So in this, we calculate maximum shear strain energy, which is given by this formula, actually divided by 2E is there, but uh, we can cancel it and is equal to this. So uh, this is permissible and this is actual. In two dimensional, we can substitute sigma three is equal to zero. And then this equation will reduce to this type. So these are all the theories and these are all the equations you have to remember if you want to solve any numerical example using theories of failure. So as I told you that in theories of failure, we equate the complex state of uh, stress to the permissible stress. Sometimes permissible stress is directly given in the problem. Sometimes it is, if it is not given, factor of safety is given, then you can calculate permissible stress by dividing the yield stress by factor of safety. Now let us solve one numerical example on based on theories of failure. Suppose this is the given problem. A bolt is acted upon by an actual pull of 16 kilonewton. Means 16 kilonewton is the actual force on that member or on that bolt. And there is a shear force of 10 kilonewton. And what we have to calculate? We have to calculate diameter of the bolt. And to calculate this diameter of the bolt, we have to uh, use various theories. So here in this problem it is given that calculate the diameter of bolt using maximum principal stress theory, maximum strain energy theory and maximum shear strain energy theory. So let us see how to solve this example. It is also given that permissible stress in simple tension is 100 MPa which is sigma E. Sigma E is equal to 100 MPa is given and you know that MPa is equal to Newton per millimeter square and uh, Poisson's ratio is also given mu is equal to 0.3. So let us see how to calculate the diameter of the bolt using these theories. So what is the given data? Given data is a bolt is there, there is some fixity on this edge and this bolt is subjected to actual force of 16 kilonewton which is equal to 16,000 Newton. And there is shear force, which is 10 kilonewton, that is 10,000 Newton. Now you know that this stress upon this area, sorry, this force upon this area will be stress in X direction. So to calculate sigma X, it is PX upon this area. Similarly, to calculate shear stress, that is small Q, is equal to this shear force divided by this area. So this data we will use while solving the problem. And it is also given that permissible stress is equal to 100 MPa, which is equal to 100 Newton per millimeter square. And mu is also given that is Poisson's ratio 0.3. So this is the given data. Now let us apply these theories of failure one by one to calculate 
diameter of this bolt. So first of all, we will apply maximum principal stress theory. So this theory is also called as Rankine's theory. And in this, you will calculate maximum principal stress and you will equate this maximum principal stress to permissible stress. Now here, sigma x, we can calculate px upon area. Uh, this is uniaxial problem, so sigma y will be zero. Then we can calculate q, that is shear force upon area. And then we will substitute here. Area will be unknown in this case. And from area, we can calculate the diameter. And you know that how we apply this theory, we equate this sigma one, which is calculated to sigma e, which is given that is 100 Newton per millimeter square. So let us calculate first maximum shear principal stress and equate it to stress at elastic limit. Then you can get the area of the bolt and from area you can calculate diameter of the bolt. So as I told you that in this case, there is only sigma x and no sigma y. So we can modify this formula like this by omitting sigma y. Using this formula, first of all, we have to calculate sigma x. Sigma x is equal to px upon a. Px is given that is 16,000 Newton upon a. Suppose a is area of bolt. Then we can calculate this q, which is shear force upon area. Same area we have to take, that is 10,000 divided by a. Now this we will substitute in this formula. So we have calculated sigma x and q. And now substitute in this formula, you will get equation something like this. And then finally, if you simplify it, the equation will become sigma is equal to plus minus means major principal stress and minor principal stress. Initially, we calculate both the principal stresses and then we will take whatever we need. So here first sigma means principal stress is equal to 8000 upon A plus minus 12,806 divided by A. So let us calculate major principal stress and minor principal. To calculate major principal stress, use positive sign. And to calculate minor principal stress, that is minimum principal stress, use negative sign. So if you calculate it, you will get maximum principal stress, that is major principal stress, as 20,806 upon area. And minimum principal stress as negative 4806 upon area. So now since we are applying Rankine's theory, that is maximum principal stress theory. So we will take maximum principal stress into consideration. So what is maximum principal stress? This is maximum principal stress. And we have to equate this maximum principal stress to permissible stress that is 100 Newton per millimeter square to calculate area. So equating maximum principal stress to permissible stress, we get this 2086 upon A is equal to 100. So if you calculate it, you will get area is equal to 208.06 millimeter square. And we know that area is equal to pi by 4 D square. So from this expression, we can calculate diameter of the bolt, which is equal to 16.28 millimeter. That means using Rankine's theory, we get diameter of bolt as 16.28 millimeter. Now let us apply second theory. Now second which is asked in the problem is maximum strain energy theory. So we, we have just seen that maximum strain energy theory, which is also called as Beltrami and Hain theory. So strain energy per unit volume of bolt is given by this formula. You have to remember this formula of strain energy and you have to equate this strain energy with the permissible value. Permissible value is given by this formula. So you have to equate these two equations to calculate area and from area you can calculate diameter of bolt. So here we are going to equate this one upon two e sigma one square plus sigma two square minus twice mu sigma one sigma two is equal to. This is known. We can cancel this two e and two e 
sigma fp is known that is 100 newton per millimeter square so we equate this first equation and second equation to calculate diameter of bolt now let us calculate what is maximum strain energy in this case so you know that strain energy is given by this formula and we have already calculated sigma 1 and sigma 2 in terms of area so this we substitute here everything mu is given 0.3 so substitute all the terms here so you will get after simplification you will get it is equal to 25.8 into 10 raised to power 7 area square into e so this is the strain energy stored in the bolt now we have to equate it to permissible value and permissible strain energy stored is given by this formula sigma square upon twice e so if you write all the values you will get 100 square upon twice e now equate these two equations to get the area of the bolt so if you solve this you will get 5000 upon e now we will equate these two equations so equating one and two we get equation like this here remember that it is area square so first of all you have to take under root to calculate area and then it equate it to pi by 4 d square and calculate the diameter of the bar so in this case if you simplify this you will get diameter of uh, bolt is equal to 17 millimeter using maximum strain energy theory now let us apply third theory as i told you that you have to remember all these formulae for calculating various stresses or strain energies in this uh, topic that is in theories of failure so here we have to calculate maximum shear strain energy and equate it to permissible so uh, this theory is also called as own misses theory or maximum distortion energy theory so in this case we write the equation like this and equate it to sigma p that is permissible square so using this equation just right substitute this sigma 1 and sigma 2 and sigma p and calculate area so if you calculate area you will get area is equal to 235.79 millimeter square or diameter of bar is equal to 17.33 millimeter so this is how we can calculate diameter of bolt using maximum shear strain energy theory so in this example we have solved uh, the numerical example on calculation of diameter of bolt using rankin's theory uh, then maximum strain energy theory and this maximum shear strain energy theory there are two more theories here that is stress cast theory maximum shear stress theory and saint venant's theory so pr procedure is similar so if you want to calculate the diameter using other two theories what we have to do in case of maximum shear stress theory permissible is maximum shear stress permissible is sigma e by 2 and actual is sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 sigma 1 and sigma 2 we have calculated in terms of area equate these two and get the value of area to calculate diameter of the bolt and last one is maximum strain theory or maximum principal strain theory so in this we calculate what is allowable strain it, it is elastic stress divided by e that is modulus of elasticity and this is actual due to applied forces so calculate this sigma 1 sigma 2 mu everything is known sigma 1 and sigma 2 are uh, in terms of area sigma 3 is 0 here and therefore you can equate these two and get the area first and then you can calculate diameter of the bolt so this is how we can apply all these five theories to calculate the diameter of the bolt so in this video we have discussed about five theories of failure that is Rankin's theory, Tresca's theory, Weltrami and Hayes theory, Von Mises theory and 
Saint Venard's theory. I hope you must have understood these theories and how to apply this theory to solve the numerical example. So stay connected to get more videos on theories of failure and also on structural analysis. Thank you for watching this video.